Okay, I've gone ahead and traced in using the spline command and the line command a lot of what uh, you see here of the little ghost. Now, let's go ahead and do the eyes real quick so you can kind of see the process a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and key in SPLIN or just SPL and hit enter and I can draw my spline in. So I'm going to actually do something kind of, uh, let's try this real quick, hit that uh, space bar again, and that's a spline edit. So what I'm going to do, oh, I don't want to edit the spline, I'm just going to see an SPL, hit enter, and it says do my first point. So start over again. So I'm going to come down here and hit this point here, this point here, and this point here. So that's kind of my evil, angry looking ghost. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, enter. Don't hit escape because it'll go away. So now I'll come up here and I hit my space bar. It goes back to my last command. Come up here above this. I'm going to click here and here. Here and I'm going to come up here like that. And actually I don't like that last point. So I'm going to do right about here because it keeps snapping to that last point. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter there. So now I'll hit the line command for line. And I'm going to draw a couple lines here real quick. Just come up here at a kind of a strange angle. Put that in. If you want, you can turn your polar tracking off down here. Just turn it off so it doesn't try to snap to that green line again. Okay, hit my space bar. And that goes back to my last command, which was line. And I'll come in here and do that. Whoops. Snap to the center there. Just hit control Z. Come down here to about right there. That looks good. Okay, now we want to trim all this up. So we're going to go ahead and select it all and turns all my uh, handles on here and I'm going to key in TR to trim and I'm going to go in here and trim this guy up so I'll trim him up trim him up whoops didn't want to get that so I'll take that back here key this in Zoom up on this. Make sure, get that out. Uh, we'll come back and delete him individually. Now we'll get the fangs, the teeth. There's a mean looking ghost here, I tell you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish this ghost up and so you can kind of see the idea. But essentially, it's pretty simple. You create a sketch and you come back here and you take your original artwork and you turn it into your own design. To me, that's exciting. My own piece of art that I've created, my own intellectual property, uh, something that I'm going to make and sell a lot of. So I'm going to hit Escape, just like that one point, and hit Delete. Okay, let's come back to this and see what the finished products look like for all of them. Okay, as you can see, I've gone ahead and drawn the bat, the ghost, and the pumpkin. Well, I've got to do a little house cleaning here, so let me go back and make sure that I have everything on the correct layer. Obviously, if I look at my layers up here, I'll hit the click on this right up here, and it comes down and shows that the ghost is kind of this dark cream or tan uh, layer here. And the pumpkin here is the orange color, so he's on the jack layer here. Uh, I don't have the bat on the correct layer. So what I'm gonna do at this point here is I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the ghost layer and I'm going to select all of the objects that define the bat here and now what I'm going to do is go and put that on the bat layer. Now you see as I drag my mouse over these different layers they change colors well this lets me know that okay I've got this on the correct layer so I'll go ahead and click on that so now the bat is on the correct layer so I'm going to come over here and hit escape and delete the uh, zoom out of that now, the next thing we need to do is to draw the cat. So, first thing you want to do is definitely make sure we're set to the cat layer. Now, I'm going to go ahead and draw uh, a few lines here, or splines here, and then I'm going to come back and show you how to manipulate those much better. All right, I've gone ahead and drawn some splines here on the cat design that I have here. So. What I want to do now is show you how to clean up some of these using fillets in the trim operation. Obviously I drew this down here wrong, but we'll fix that as well. 
But before I start fixing this down here, I want to clean up these uh, overlapping fillets and splines here, excuse me, overlapping splines. So what I'm going to do is come up here to my layers, click on this, and I'm going to turn off my artwork. So I'll click on that and turn it off so I can kind of see things a little better. All right, so let's go up here and let's do a selection. I'll hit my escape key and I'll click off here in space. Give me a left, uh, right to left selection, key and T R, and hit enter. Now I'll take this one, get rid of him. I'll come back and do a fillet on that in a moment. Clean up that, and I'll zoom up here. Hit escape, and then I'll do another selection. Get this up here, zoom up, hit T R to trim. You get some uh, noise on these lines, but don't worry about that. It's going to work out anyway. Click on this as well, zoom out, zoom over, and we'll go ahead and clean up uh, these as well. I'm going to hit escape again, select these from right to left. Actually, let's do escape, and let's select from left to right, because we don't want the bat. And I still got part of the bat, so hit escape again. Let's try this again. Okay, we'll go from here over to there, because remember, anything that's in a blue selection box is only going to take what is completely contained. So I'll select that. But I didn't get this right here, so I'll hold my shift key down and select it as well. Now, key and TR to trim, zoom up, get rid of that, that, this, that. Hold my middle mouse button down while I'm still in the trim command, push it down and drag, and I can get this guy here and this guy here. Now, let's do a zoom, escape, zoom, two extents. Okay, so we got our cat going pretty good right there. So pan over here to this. And we're going to come up here and do some fillets as we were talking about. So what I'll do is select the fillet command. And I'll go by radius. And I'm going to do a really small radius, like say a 32nd of an inch. So it'd be 0 0.03125. Now this may not work, but we're going to try it anyway. So now it says select first object. So I'll grab him. I'll grab him. Yeah, it did actually pretty good. Still a little sharp. So what I'll do is hit Escape and do a Control Z. Now let's go back and hit our space bar to go back to our last command. And it didn't find it. All right, I know what to do. Pan down here. Hit my up arrow over here on the middle of my keyboard. And see, it remembers the last uh, sequence of commands. So I hit uh, space bar for fill it. Now I'll go back here to radius radius here and I'm going to key in since it's already select to 16th of an inch I just hit my space bar and then we'll select this first object and that second object I like that better now I'm going to keep going around doing this radius and filleting uh, oh I gotta hit my space bar again here's where I would use the command multiple grab him grab him oop that's too much hit escape let's try this again use my up arrow fill it We'll try this one more time. I may not be able to do this one, but we'll give it a shot. It looks like it did work. Okay. So we'll zoom out. Zoom around here. Come up. Make a selection. TR to what? Trim. Get rid of him. And him. Now, before I go too much further in, in doing all these fillets, I want to show you how to manipulate one of these splines. So we're going to go back up here and turn our artwork on. Okay. Now, if we look closely, this spline is actually a little above the line I originally drew on my piece of paper. I'm going to go ahead and select it anyway. Escape, select that. And you notice I have these control points here. I can manipulate the shape of my spline by moving these control points around. So I'll move it to about right there and hit click. Grab this one here. Move him about right there and click. And as you can tell, I'm manipulating the shape of my uh, spline to be more of what I want or more accurate to my design. Click there and manipulate. Okay, it looks pretty good. Uh, right here, my, my tail. Hit escape. Hit my, uh, select this guy here. And I'm going to move that kitty tail up a little bit right there. Same here as well. And I'm probably going to come back here and use a fillet, which I think would be more accurate. Now this right here is actually better 
than what I originally drew, but I may want to take this one here, move him in a little bit. Grab that spline there and move it in a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you get the general idea that we're trying to uh, make our design a little more accurate from what we originally drew. Okay, uh, let's do this fillet, fillet here and uh, get that out of the way. Go back to fillet here. Now I know that on my radius, this might be not, uh, this might be too small. So I'm going to key in 0.25 and see what that does. Select this first object. So like that second object, that's what I wanted. I like it. So anyway, let's go ahead and finish out this cat and come back and see how he looks. All right, I've got all my objects drawn. Now I need to get these ready to not only print, but also to laser engrave. Now let's do some house cleaning here. I'm going to come up to my layers here, uh, properties manager. And I'm going to select on my artwork. And I'm going to do a right mouse click and I'm going to delete that layer. I no longer need the artwork that's on here, the things that I've drawn and scanned, so I'm just going to hit OK. It says it was not deleted. Well, i got to figure out what's going on there. So I think the issue is there. I'll click on this, hit Delete Command, and that's gone. Click on this guy out here. Oh, I know what's wrong. That needs to be selected on this layer here. OK, let's see if I can find this guy here and delete him. Hit delete. Yeah, so now I've got that deleted. Now it's just the artwork that I'm working with here. Okay, so what I want to do now is to think about the wood that I'm going to be using, my medium density fiberboard, MDF as we call it. So I'm going to create a new layer here and I'm going to call this layer MDF. Now I'm going to change the color of this layer to something that's a bit different than what I've been using. So I'm going to go with kind of a, oh let's see here, we'll go with this kind of a blue color here. Okay, and we'll apply that and we'll apply it so that way we know what layer we're on and stuff. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lock the other layers for the moment. Okay, lock those layers. I need to get rid of this black and white layer here too. I don't need that one anymore. That was my original artwork that I inverted. Hit delete on that. Okay, so we seem to be pretty cleaned up here. I'm going to go ahead and select my MDF layer, make it active. And I'm going to draw a rectangle. I've cut a lot of layers, uh, excuse me, I've cut a lot of MDF out <coughs> at 3 inches by, we'll say, 9 inches. And I'll start drawing those. Let's go ahead and turn this off here. And I'll come up and hit my line command. Select that. And I'll start my first point about right here. I'll say uh, 1, comma, 1. And we'll start here. We'll make sure our polar tracking is turned on. And I'm going to come out here about 9 inches. Hit 9. And then enter. Then I'll come up here, I'll go up 3 inches here, then I'll come over here and I'll snap on the end of this, pull that up to about right there, and then I'll hit C to close. Okay, so I've got my rectangular shape. Well, you can see i got a problem here. I've got a lot of uh, large objects that I need to scale down to fit on this MDF. And keep in mind we're making fridge magnets so I'm gonna come over here and use my left to right selection for my ghost and I'll select him and then it says that it's locked notice how you got the little lock comes up on the cursor so we'll go back up here and unlock the ghost and we'll take that now and come back over here to move grab our ghost here Let's do this again, Control-Z. Now we've got a lot of artifacting going on here. That's the uh, lines that kind of look all jaggy and stuff. So I'm going to come over here and select this again. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'll come over and make sure I'm on my ghost layer. I'm going to unlock all these commands, all these layers here now. I'll select the ghost layer. And I'll highlight him. And I'll hit my move command. 
select my base point and I'll move it to about right here now what I want to do I don't want a three inch ghost in my uh, project so I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna kind of uh, scale him down to what I actually want on the modify and I'll select a base point here and I'll scale him down to about oh zoom up on this a little bit to about right there that looks good then I'll grab <coughs> this object here and I'll hit the move command and I'll move him down onto my MDF probably about right there okay so you can see how I've moved this down now what I'm gonna do is take all these objects and try to get as many as I can on this piece of MDF by moving and scaling them down to that because remember this MDF this blue box right here this rectangle is our wood that we're going to be given to go and use on the laser engraver so let's come back to this in a moment okay I've gone ahead and copied all my objects and scaled them and moved them so I could fit as many as I can on this particular piece of 3 inch by 9 inch MDF so what I want to do now is I want to save my file and then the next thing I want to do is I want to save it as a DXF so I'll come down here and I'll save it as a DXF and then depending on how your computer is set up or how your laser engraver is set up the, you can copy it to a thumb drive which we don't do here at my uh, operation or you can email it to yourself I elect to email this file this DXF file to myself and then open it up on my laser engraver computer and laser this out so go design your own Halloween uh, artwork that you sketch up and create your own intellectual property design it use the spline command use the fillet command use whatever you need to to create your own product that you can go and laser out and make multiple copies of and again that's manufacturing it is designing to manufacturing I'm probably gonna work a little bit more on cleaning this up here but for now let's go ahead and take care of our project and let's get some of those made <laughs>